Hello and welcome to Witch Bitch where we talk the real tea and today we have another Claudia yes. uh, joining us. And Julia too! <laughs> and I'm home. I've been, I've been away for a little while mm. and I'm just going to be back home for the next two or so months and I'm off travelling again but um, you're going to see us together now. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so... Claudia, you, this is your first time on the show, so yep. how we always start with a new guest is asking what your awakening story is or your spirituality beginnings. Mm. Um, everyone kind of seems to have their own very different, unique story, so um, it always takes us to like places we never expect, um, so I'm excited to hear yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I have one particular story. Um, gosh, I remember <laughs> being around four and seeing penguins in the garden. That's in a desert country where there are no penguins in the garden. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah, and I remember at the time that I can't tell anybody. So that was like an interesting, so it was my, my little bubble experience. So that was quite interesting. And I knew it was special, so I kept it myself. Um, and then the next, well, and then when I was like late teenager, I would start seeing ghosts. Wow. <laughs> and growing up in a sort of not very religious community, but majority were Christians, I knew it was something that I could not speak about. So I kept that to myself. <laughs> mm, wow. And then years later, my, oh, I wasn't going to mention this, but hey, I think it needs to be mentioned. My brother passed away suddenly. Um, and that gave me my sort of personal experience with um, coming in contact with someone's spirit. So that was mm. kind of, um, he had passed on and I think he was trying to reach out. But I was too close <laughs> to yeah. understand what it was, and it scared me even more. But months yeah. later, I kind of understood what that was, and worked through it, and had dreams, meeting up with them. So that was like more of a recovery, or not recovery, but awakening and healing. Mm. I think yes. that's probably a nice way for it. Um, and then that kind of led me further on to... So after that, I had my son, etc., and life got really, really hard as a single parent. Because literally, you'd get up, you'd do the same thing, get the mm -hmm. do the job that not a lot of them <laughs> pay the bills, come home. It was like work, work, work every single day. Mm -hmm. And by I think it was around 2009, I saw something online about soul retrieval from a shamanic sort of session. Off I went because it was like the most exciting thing I'd ever seen. Not that I thought there was something wrong with me, but it's like the retrieval piece very much appealed to me. To say, mm -hmm. could there be sort of some kind of medicine that I needed? Just to feel a little bit more complete. Kind of reconcile all my previous experiences with who I am. And it was amazing. I got to meet my um, third animal and it was stunning. It's about a deer. We don't have deers here, so it's ah, even more special. <laughs> I can see that actually. Yeah. I can see that. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> and then Bambi was my favorite childhood story. <laughs> so, like, kind of awesome. all just linked up. Um, and then from there, I discovered Buddhism meditation, um, which was really, really. I hadn't. I'd done a couple of guided meditations. But nothing really, I didn't link, I didn't connect, nothing much happened, so I kind of discarded that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But with Buddhism meditation, it's solo meditation. So it's between you and your soul, or your spirit helpers, or your guide. It's much bigger, and that just sucked me right in, and I was like, I felt home. I absolutely felt home. Um, and then to reconcile what's my purpose? I found a past life regression person and I had some of the most amazing experiences. 
and that's where I got sort of a, um, you know, you kind of have an idea of what your purpose is, and then that just kind of brought it all together, and it was to show people how to care about themselves. That was beautiful. That was really, really beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow, that would have been... Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's truly magical. Like, you went through it all. (laughs) It started with penguins and (laughs) ended up with your life purpose. That's, like, seriously amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for sharing. Yes. So tell us a little bit. Really hot. Yeah, we're, it's boiling here too. We're, it's like we're in a heat wave or something here yeah. in Australia as well. So, Claudia, tell us a little bit mm. about that journey into your purpose. Um, so, at, so at, when I found that out, I was very much stuck into the, um, here I'm a mother, I'm a single mother, I'm taking care of my son, doing my best to raise him because... There were so many corrections I was trying to make as a parent from how I was raised. Mm. And number one was not being emotionally connected because I didn't have any of that. So I'm very much of a feeling person. I had zero. So you could say I was emotionally neglected. You look mm-hmm. like from parent to child. So that was that. So I was correcting that. And another thing I was correcting was... Um, letting my son be himself. So I had understood that as a soul, you choose who you're going to go through, or not specifically who you're going to go through, but you're going to choose when to come in based on what I've seen in the past life regression. You kind of have this glimpse of these are the lives you get to choose. Which one are you going to do next? Um, That was my experience at the time. And I knew there was such a big respect for giving birth to a person, giving birth to that baby. And you have to treasure them. It's almost like giving them the space to discover themselves, and then you love it. You just give so much love. (laughs) And that was kind of, yeah, that was very important for me to do. Um, And then, so around purpose, yeah, the caring part, the day I found out what that actually is, in kind of like words or symptoms, I could kind of look back and say, okay, because of how I was parented, I had that overwhelming need to just be connected. And at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to connect to, but I knew it was to be nourished, to be nurtured, to be seen. And I did have a mother figure who came into my life for literally just six months. <laughs> that was like so much medicine. And I was around about 18 when that happened, 17 or 18. And it was just at the right time. You know when you're going through puberty and it's uh, everything makes sense on Monday, nothing makes sense on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me so much sanity and just, I guess, grounding. Then I felt, yeah, okay, I can be this. And so if I looked back then from 2009, going back like 20 years, you can kind of see, oh, that's how I was looking after other people. But not in a rescue way. It was just when I would spot somebody discounting themselves, I would say, that's mm-hmm. not true. <laughs> that's not mm-hmm. true. Like little sort of bits of help. And that's really kind of just, um, yeah, that's kind of how I saw what that looked like. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. I really relate to that because I feel like what you're talking about is what I'm going through now because, um, yeah, I went through life when I was younger thinking I knew my purpose and then things kind of took life, had its own plans Mm -hmm. and I got flipped (laughs) upside down and that was all during my, um, like when I was around 15, 16, all the way up until 19. So the time when you're supposed to figure out like supposed to figure out Mm. um your life and your purpose and stuff and so I went through a few dark night of the souls a few um really challenging times uh to figure out what I wanted to do in life and um yeah it was only until literally just 
very recently that I realized a big part of my purpose is about exploring and um, being being an explorer of basically anything to do with that word, like either physically exploring places, um, which is a big part of it, and also exploring information um, like mm. uh, about things, like whether that's mm. about, you know, plants or herb herbology or um even just survival skills things like that i have so many like um how you were saying like little aspects and all these little things that i love and yep. um an explorer kind of puts them all together mm. uh, because there's just so many aspects yeah. and yeah so i figured that out very recently and so i deeply like resonate with um your story and your journey so far and um what you've shared because it's kind of what i'm going through at the you moment. were feeling yeah. you were feeling a lot of um pressure too weren't you time pressure in like yeah. i haven't figured it out yet i need to really like you were feeling mm. that timeline pressure yeah i think also when it comes to finding your passion and going out and getting it it starts off a very different place from where it gets to. Mm. So right now, explore is the word that comes to mind, and that's what I've found peace with. But I know that it's only just like the seed, mm -hmm. and it will grow into, you know, who knows what. But, yeah, I struggled a lot with um, the time pressure of it because high school can be really, like, intense. Because yeah. that was when I was in high school and when I left high school – they were the two times where I didn't know what I was doing. And, um, yeah, I, was, I left high school not knowing what I was going to do. I was literally, like, there was a million doors and I just had to choose one and just go down that one and just see what happened. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. And I, went, and I was like, oh, I don't know about that. That was cool, but don't want to walk down that much further. So I went and opened another door and I was like, oh, that was fun. I learned some things, but also don't really want to do that. Let's try a different one. And I just kept going around and I, I still am going to do that. Yeah. Good. It, it brings a lot. Into yeah. Life. Good. Good. I'm yeah. glad you're going to still do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, so. When I was um, towards the end of school, and there was that pressure to choose a job, choose a career, choose something. Yeah. Um, that was insane, but it was pre-social media. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kitty. <laughs> to go. <laughs> Say hi to the people. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that was a big hello. Hi to the people. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> so cute. people place to get comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was a lot of pressure, I remember, to choose something because time was running out. So mm. by the last three months in the trick, we were forced one last time to choose something. <laughs> Even though it yeah. didn't really, like, why? And I yeah. had a job to go into, and it, all that pressure just dropped away. In, in, it just dropped away mm -hmm. because it was manufactured in yes. school to oh, push you so to go true. to university. Yes, so yeah. true. What you and just said parents, really true. Yeah, it's and then really the parents resonated. As well, they wanted to look proud. My child chose something and went. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was manufactured. Um, yeah. 100%. The way you just worded that dropped in deeply to me and resonated for me because yeah. I really do feel a lot of the pressure that we feel from outside and then it becomes our own. We own it and then it becomes mm. our own pressure yeah. is manufactured because yeah. there is no timeline. There it doesn't no. exist in reality. No, no. And I feel, yeah. so I studied or I've always been with astrology since I was a teenager because obvious. <laughs> but um, uh, about 10 years ago, I studied with Tom Lesher, evolutionary astrology. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, what I call a life skill, is to know how to read your own birth chart or at least find somebody who does it with integrity. There's so much interesting information there. But that is what we should be getting when we're 18 or 12 or 14. 
Mm. To have access to that, to say, yes. there, do you recognize this in yourself already? Because the pressure to choose comes way too young in our society as well. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you need to take your 20s and explore, do all kinds of things, work mm. all kinds of people, and co- all kinds of settings. And then, because you need those experiences to have a pattern of interest or pattern of, oh yeah, that's satisfying, satisfying, satisfying. To then say by 30 or 35, hmm, I can see that this is something I want to do for the next 10 years or yeah. in a more serious mm-hmm. capacity, yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I think it's actually quite insane, the expectations that are put on literal children. Um, yeah. It's really, it's really, like, hard, especially because when I left school, I left quite young because I was already a year younger than everyone else in my grade so when I left I was actually 15 um and I was walking into basically like the complete unknown because I just knew I didn't want to be in school anymore and I knew that when I was whatever path I was walking that it was one that was not very much a beaten path yet like it was just yeah. kind of wandering the through. Less traveled. yeah mm. like yeah I could only just barely make out this next step forward and um it was and that's really all we tra- need most of the time sorry to yeah that's all we need is just the next step yeah yes and I just had to keep trusting and like most of the time I I thought well I always knew that I what I had chosen was the right choice and there was never a moment of regret But there was definitely moments where I thought I had, like, I was really scared of what I had led myself to. I was like, I don't have many qualifications other than, like, the qualifications that are within me. Like, everyone does have qualifications, but as terms on paper, I don't have that many. And, like, it really scared me if I wanted to go down a career path. And then I had to just remind myself... I didn't even... Why am I even thinking about a career? I don't even know what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it, when yeah. I do find out, I know I'll make it happen. And step by step, it just kind of like those moments of a lot of fear and those moments of like, oh, I did the right thing. And, oh, look how far ahead I am yeah. of of um, people my age. Not ahead in, in an egotistical sense, but just... In discovering, in discovering, and in life, and yeah. learning things, and that sort yeah. of stuff, and um, yeah, it, it was really challenging at first. But and this segue, um, <laughs> I'm such a good segue. Huh? Um, yeah, well I. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a big part of that was learning how to self-soothe and Mm -hmm. that's the topic that I've written for today's um, conversation, which is how to self-soothe. And I think self-soothing is... Exploring. Yeah, and a big part of how to move forward because when you're in a panic state, like, you lead yourself to completely destructive places at least in my experience that's what i've experienced i don't know uh, uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> learning how to self-soothe has been an incredible experience i that's kind of what i learned when i was away mm. um because um i lived in a tent for three months for the past three months over summer of all seasons um and all the rain (laughs) yeah all the rain all the all the summer storms that are crazy the intense heat that wakes me up at like eight in the morning Mm. and I was working as a bartender as well so I was working until like 1 a.m and I'd have to wake up early because otherwise my tent got too hot so yeah um there was definitely a lot of moments of like panic and frustration and not sure what I was doing and just like I was in a very intense environment all the time because um it was also in like a hostel um it was like a hostel slash campground and um I was living in the campground and like tents were like this close together I could hear everything everywhere (laughs) and um yeah you can imagine 
just imagine. You need to write a book. Please write a book. Yeah. <laughs> it was just yeah. insane. It was, it was put it this way, she had an education <laughs> while she was away. Yeah, and a lot of that was learning how to self soothe because mm. I was in a, like in the most unpeaceful place physically like in terms of physicality and energy it was the most unpeaceful environment ever but I was the most at peace that I've been because um I knew it was the right step for me the right place for me to go and um it was what you wanted it's what I wanted Mm. and I had to learn how to self-soothe because every morning like there was a time when I first moved away where every morning I would wake up like with huge anxiety that I had never really like faced before. I've dealt with anxiety. I don't like the label of I have anxiety, but it's something that I have experienced experienced and navigated for quite some time, Mm. but I'd never experienced it in this way before. And so I would wake up like in this intense anxiety because I just didn't know what on earth was going on. Um, but it taught me taught me self-soothing and that's why I wanted to talk about it today because you're all about self-care and learning how to <laughs> be your own master of, you know, self-love and stuff. So I know you would be a magical, magical person to talk to about all this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a self-soothing... It's a huge, huge topic. Um, mm. I think I'll start off with saying we first need to identify with what makes us feel safe. And for mm. all of us, it's different. Um, quick reference back to astrology. If you have, for example, a fixed sign, you would need more safety than any of the other signs. Yeah. So I'm fixed. I'm on the cusp. So I'm fixed and mutable. So on a Monday, I need a lot of security. On Tuesday, I'm like, what the hell? What are we doing today? We can't do anything we want. <laughs> so it's a little bit nuts sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But if you can figure out what it is you need to feel safe, is it a home or is it belonging to a community or is it uh, something you need to do every day that helps you feel, um, that helps you nurture or look kind of, watering the plant of what do I need to feel safe. I love that. That is a good thing. And for all of us, it's different. Yeah. So as an introvert, my home is my everything. So I would look at saying, what is it inside that I need to feel safe today? How do I, so if you look at it from a self-soothing perspective, what do I need to do to come home to myself? Mm. And I think that is the key for everybody to say, yeah. this is what I need to feel safe and what do I need to come home to myself. Because mm. ultimately, if, and I, for everyone, it's a different age where you're going to find that I am home. So it's fine to be on my own. Because I remember as a teenager in my 20s, I was doing everything to avoid it. <laughs> Like, it was the most scariest concept. And pre-social media, you were definitely taught to socialize. So being an introvert wasn't even a possibility. You needed to be socialized to be seen as normal or a uh, fit member of society, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so, so for social media, I think it's just brought all the different ways and different first people um, Hold on, let me rephrase. So with social media, you actually get to see all the different sides in a day, which mm-hmm. can be overwhelming, but it's also educational. So if you take from it what you need, then that's very interesting to see that we're different. And yeah. Yeah. So how I started with self-care, if I can go back to that, being an only parent, and there's literally no time for yourself. <laughs> I had to figure out how to deal with all the stress because being sort of working a full-time job and then not being able to do overtime because my parenting life starts at five. So there's no overtime. There's no, oh, I need to stay longer. That wasn't even an option. I needed to go. 
and I was going to arrive at work on time because otherwise I'm taken away from my fun time. So that was those boundaries in terms of time and between work and life was crystal clear to me. <laughs> but yeah. I understand that a lot of people struggle with it. And so the one thing I needed help with, which is what solo meditation gave to me, was this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Constantly thinking, constantly thinking, and then you analyze your thinking, and then you analyze whether your anal analysis was correct. <laughs> and it was a total ce cerebral chaos. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. with a solo meditation, I mean, within just a few times of going it, I was immediately on the path of observing your thoughts and observing how my mind produces these thoughts. So just some of the most fascinating fascinating sort of experiences, like to discover mm -hmm. those, to say it's not me, it's the way things work. And it helped me calm down mentally a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was meditating every single day. So every day at the same time, I was doing my 20 to 30 minutes meditation. And I would literally just change from the loving kindness meditation to the mindfulness meditation. Um, and it gave me everything I needed in terms of connecting with others. I don't know if you're aware of the loving kindness meditation. I, I, I've heard of it, but I, I haven't done it. That's so beautiful. <laughs> you start off wishing yourself well and wishing yourself love and wishing yourself to be free from suffering. Then mm -hmm. you choose somebody you get along with really well and you do the same for them. Then the next person, somebody you feel neutral towards. So no sort of strong connection, and you do the same for them. And then you choose somebody you clash with, somebody you don't get along with at all. It brings them so much peace. Oh, and in the end of it, you're all standing together, wishing the same for all humanity. It's such I, a have I have yeah. done this. I have done this. Yes, you brought it beautiful. out of my memory bank. Yeah. Wow, I remember that. Yeah, so I was doing that every second day, and then the other day was the kind of mindfulness, where you literally just go into different levels of this. And it brought, it gave my body so much calm and groundedness. That's before earthing was a thing. Like, earthing came like years later. <laughs> and, but before then, <clears throat> so that was, for me, solo meditation gives long-term self-soothing. It gives you kind of base level mm -hmm. of just feeling at home and within yeah. yourself and then obviously to know that you've got all the power but you don't have to use it right now. You can just sit mm -hmm. And that's the power of you. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. That's so true. I love, I love how you said... Um, that you've got all this power, but you don't have to use it because um, it's, it, can be it can be overwhelming. And also when you feel connected and when you feel the power within you, I mean, this is my experience. When I feel that, I tend to like hold this belief that I have to do something with it mm -hmm. and I have to do something with it now. And, yeah. um, like, if I ever feel a passion come up or if I ever feel um, strongly connected to some aspect of, you know, whether that's a spiritual thing or, like, just um, even just, like, a hobby or anything like that, I have this feeling that, oh, I have to act on this, I have to make this into something that will, like, serve me in a 3d sense so like say if it's a hobby i'll be like oh i've got to let's start making money out of this instead mm. of just being like oh i can just have fun and i can just spend <laughs> yep. money on it and it not even matter like and then i end up trying too hard and then i don't like it anymore mm. and um that is just one example it happens in many other aspects of my life where i don't know i just Instead of just sitting there with it, it's just like, oh, let's yep. just vomit this out into the world <laughs> without any, like, without any plan or without any structure. Let's just vomit it everywhere and <laughs> let it out. And then I don't no, have no. it. And oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and then I just don't have access to it in the same way. And then I have to wait for it to build up and then I vomit it again. And then it's, <laughs> it's just a vomiting cycle. 
Yeah. I think because of the era I come from, I think there was definite um, sort of support or encouragement by society to say you have your job and then you have at least one hobby. <laughs> so there was kind of a structure and you were clear that if I just wanted to have fun, I could have fun. And then the other thing was your job. But yeah. I think the lines became a little bit blurry maybe over the last 10, 15 years when yeah. the internet came online and we kind of saw that freelancers are having fun or it looks like they're having fun. They might not be, but... <laughs> and it was kind of... And then the gig economy came online. So you could have three things you could do for money or not for money and then you have one thing you do for good money, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. We've got so much choice. It's really, really exciting. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. And overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Yeah, because I think, um, I, I know I get really excited. Like I get um, like, oh, I want my finger in this pie and I want my finger in that pie. And then I've got no fingers left because they're all in the pies. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, oh, what about the fingers for me? I need some, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I get um, overwhelmed by the choice that's available because I didn't grow up with that. I didn't, and I, I sometimes I think it must be so overwhelming for the the generations that are growing up with the internet because they mm. see so much choice in front of them. It's like a smorgasbord of like job, like ways to make money. There's ways oh, to make money yeah. in the world now that I never would have thought about when I was growing up. I would never have thought yep. that there would be a thing, such a thing as an influencer. Yeah. Or something like I was, that. Yeah, my, mind, my yeah. mind actually went to the, I think it was a YouTuber who was selling bath water <laughs> in little bottles. <laughs> It's incredible. I know, I know who this is. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I don't know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's like <laughs> the absolute extreme. Yeah, so I think so somebody I really, really love in the business industry is Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh, uh, yeah. The Heart of Gold. And he, he does such a, such a good job of encouraging everybody, I suppose, to say, Pick one thing and explore it. Absolutely mm -hmm. what you're doing, Juliet. So pick one thing and explore it. And I would actually add and say, look at it as an adventure. Don't yeah. have any expectations. Mm -hmm. And also don't do something if you're not interested in it. <laughs> like yeah. that's just already headache, headache station. <laughs> yeah, yeah but really good advice. Explore it and turn it into an adventure and have a good time. Because then there's less pressure to do well or to succeed or to take, make money from it. I mean, if you're looking at something interesting, go and see what that looks like to somebody else if you want to volunteer, for example. Mm. Or if they say, oh, but we actually have budget for this, can we pay you? And then, so that's how every little step just unfolds on the top. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I think also to to um, add to what you're saying, when we can define what success looks like for us on a personal yes. level, yes. then we can say, well, if success doesn't equal money to you, yeah. it doesn't to some people, it could be, you know, job fulfilment, it could be helping people, it could, you know, money yeah. might be last on the list. Then once you've got that, definition inside you um then you've got a structure to go out there and be successful to get the you know create the yeah. steps to yeah. get that success that you want for yourself because if you're if you don't know what success means to you you're just kind of like grabbing at things and you don't yeah, really have a plan yeah 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 and then and also one once you're busy with a project you can for example identify success points or success markers. Yeah, so I love say, that. Okay, if I'm still excited about this, is that a point of success to me? And mm. then you'll go and say, if I'm progressing, is that does that mean success to me? And have like a few little ones on your journey. Mm. Instead of just having like one sort of end goal being your sort of idea of success. Yeah. Mm. Well. 
Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and I have an a habit of placing expectation on basically a lot of things. <laughs> but yeah. also when <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> when things like um come up that are supposed to be fun that I see like for example I um tend to get like very excited about things like uh fi- learning how to sail and yeah. um I get I put so much expectation on it because literally I go from I want to sail to then I'm going to sail the world by myself <laughs> in a yacht <laughs> oh not in a yacht that. in a sailboat sorry <laughs> not a yacht in a sailboat oh, I'll come with you if you're on a yacht <laughs> yeah my bad <laughs> not a yacht uh, a oh, sail <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I definitely jump from the beginning right to the end and it ruins the fun of the journey to get there because the whole time I'm thinking oh I want to sail around the world by myself in this in a sailboat that I bought and yeah. then I can go anywhere and, and then I just forget the journey and mm-hmm. I forget and then I get caught up in for example there was a time um a few years ago during the pandemic where there was an opportunity to learn how to sail, like go on this, on this like sailboat with this team and this business and you go up Mm -hmm. the coast and it's like a few weeks of, of learning how to sail. And I turned the opportunity down because of money, which I did have. I did have the money, but it was like all of my money. (laughs) So I didn't want to risk it. And I, I, I didn't go on this thing and looking back I actually regret that and the reason why I didn't wasn't just because of the money it was because I overthought the whole process and I was thinking things like so like putting so much expectation and thinking about the tiny little details of it all of like oh but um am I gonna have fun on this thing or is it actually gonna give me a qualification at the end and, and like things that I didn't even need to think about and it didn't even Mm. matter about because I just wanted to have fun on this thing. But because I was thinking about the end goal so much, it stopped me from actually doing it. Now, there is plenty more opportunities which I will take when it comes. But, yeah, I do... It was a learning curve. It was a learning curve. Mm. And that happened a lot in lockdown because um, I just thought, well, first of all, the lockdown kind of scared me and I didn't want to get trapped somewhere mm. where that wasn't home. <laughs> um, sorry, so we that, can laugh. We can all yeah, laugh, laugh about laugh that, that, but yeah, yeah. that fear was real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was the first thing. But I turned down all these, uh, uh, like, potential um, paths because... I was too scared or I overthought it. Yeah, made it so complicated. And I made it so complicated. Mm. I'm going to mm. disagree. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a bit of compassion and hopefully that's going to inspire you to just change the view a little bit. Yeah. yeah. To say those opportunities were not aligned enough. Yeah, yeah of course. So yeah. What happens is if something's not aligned enough, we go into thinking and try to justify and figuring things out. Why, why isn't this a right fit and we go into that? So yeah. no regrets. No regrets. Yeah, that's no actually regrets. true. I didn't mean to use that word. I don't like using that word. So thank you for pulling that up. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, I think the, you will, the, you can sit down Monday morning and say, dear universe, good morning. Here's my cup of coffee. How are you? I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I would very much like to get, I don't know, surprised, but in pleasant mm. ways, or I want to meet somebody interesting. Yeah. Then you might meet the first person and they're like, they're all in my face and what do you want from me? And it's for you to say, not this one. Thank you. Send me the next one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, love it's like that. interviewing. Oh. Yeah. Yes. It's like interviewing applicants for a job. I think if you can look at opportunities that way, not every opportunity is 100% for you, but it's for you to say no and why not and move on. Mm. Very true. Oh, Claudia, you've got some golden nuggets for us today. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me tell you more about my self-care because my self-care is very, very different to what's out there. <laughs> okay, yes, please do. Um, so how I, so I was dealing with, um, so my dad kind of wrote me off when I was around 20. So in his mind, he was like, oh, you don't meet these requirements. So then we're not going to be like, I'm not going to be talking to you anymore. I know I'm laughing about it today, but hey, <laughs> it's a little bit totally ridiculous. Yeah. And yeah, I was walking with that pain throughout my 20s, and by the time I got to my early 30s, I was like, I'm so tired of this. I, I would never do this to my child, no matter what they do. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. That's the funny thing. So I didn't do anything wrong, but even because I was raising my son at the time, it doesn't matter what he would have done, I could never do that to my own child. Yeah. And so that kind of woke me up out of it and said, I need to figure out a way to process the pain. Because I'm a feeling person, I wanted to get it out. <laughs> and I didn't have enough information at the time on how that would be. And mm -hmm. so I tried EFT, but it didn't... It, it was like a bowl was cleaned out with one wipe. It wasn't enough. And then I tried journey work. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm. So journey Tell work us. was Brandon, I think it was Brandon Bays, if I'm correct. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. It combines what EFT does, where you express your emotions, or you kind of do that. She will take you on like different levels, like but you're hip, hypnotized. You go like into deep, deep meditation. You go to the bottom of your hectic situation. You, this is a long time ago. Let me see if I remember correctly. Then you're kind of sitting around a bonfire and it's making peace for the different people that were involved in that situation. But it's very complex to do on your own and to do it with somebody else. And I did that and it, Again, it was like two wipes out of a dirty bowl. It yeah, just wasn't right. enough. <laughs> I know. It's a cute little analogy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I was, then the one day, because I'm, when I write, I write intuitively. It's like I'm connecting. And mm -hmm. I just got the message, just write. And I would say, I feel hurt because my dad's not talking to me. And you just, and I would write and write until all that was written out. And I felt so much better, but not completely. And mm -hmm. I automatically went into a forgiveness sentence where I say, I forgive him for doing all of these things, da 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 da. And I almost got to the end. The last piece was about forgiving myself. So, what did I want to give, forgive myself for? Mm -hmm. And then the cherry on the cake or the pudding or the cupcake is to say, letting go of my expectation of who I wanted him to be as a dad. Yeah. It's like these levels of med of medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that's my, my self-care. So that's the core of my self-care work is looking at helping people expressing themselves but emotionally, because every time something happens to us, whether you see, hear, or experience it, you have an emotional response that comes directly from your brain. It's not by choice, it's not because you're a weak character, it's not because of all these things that society tell us to do. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with it, it's natural, it's how your body functions. And if you can just sit with it, but more than sit with it, actually go through it. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years and recently been helping people with. And it's, yeah, it's quite an intense journey, but I make it practical. You're alert, you're present, you, you're looking at everything and it's, there's no sort of shock sensation that comes up or like pain that comes up. It's just like the most gentle healing journey that you can go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that I'm sounds that, go. that sounds like my what I do. Mm. I do very oh, a very similar thing. Yeah, a very very yeah. similar thing, 
where I write down my emotion that I want to work yep. through. And then I go, so I, for example, I feel um, nothing right now. <laughs> and then I'll go, why? And I ask myself why, and then I answer because this, this, this. And then I'll say, why again? And I just keep going deeper and deeper, and okay. I just write whatever whatever comes you know, like how you said, just intuitively, whatever comes to paper, even if it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't answer the question, I will write it and then more will come and then more will come and then I'll see. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What's wrong? Oh, no. It's showing recording on my side. <laughs> oh my goodness. We can always, that's fine. We can always do another one if you want to do, like a part two or something, another time. Okay, cool. I think also. I think it cut off at the right time, if you ask me. Because <laughs> there was a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. This was lovely. This was, this was much better than I expected. <laughs> I was like quite nervous. <laughs> Thank you to you for being amazing host. Yeah, this was great. Okay. No problem. Okay, cool. All right. All right, beautiful humans. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye.